knowing is knowledge. The path to success is difficult and challenging. We help in your journey to corporate boardroom. Embodying the spirit of knowledge. ebiz.com Private Limited. A vision to reality. I'm Kanika Malhan. Welcome to the world of computer education. Even if you don't have enough money, time, and higher education for computer learning, but have the dream and willingness to work hard and desire for success, we have the mission and successful leaders to help you get there. Trust me, we have a platform where one can avail both online and offline facilities for computer learning. Currently, we're offering the basics of computer education. Very shortly, we're planning to introduce various self-designed, useful courses for ongoing learning. We strongly believe in a concept of learn while you earn. It has been our effort to take learning to every citizen who has the passion to become a successful professional tomorrow. And we feel if we could put one student on a higher pedestal of life, our mission towards life has somehow been accomplished. Now I'm introducing Shivani, who's going to educate you the basic computer learning program. This is one of our attempts to teach you visually. For more information, please visit our website at www.ebizzle.com. So friends, all the best and happy learning. Hello friends, I'm Shivani and I will be talking about basics of computers. You all know how important is the knowledge of computers to us today. Well, then why do we suffer from the very basic questions as to what is a computer? How does it operate? What are the major and minor functions pertaining to it? Don't worry, I am here and I will take you from the very basics, that is the first module to the sixth module, a full-fledged course in computers teaching you about all different parts of the computer as well as the internet. Computers are used at a lot of places. Places where we can actually see the computers and places where we actually cannot see the computers. Computers are used for medical, for e-billing, for e-banking, for aircraft, for trains, for tickets for movies, for agriculture, for military science, for medical science, for agricultural science. There are so many other things where actually computer is used. Let us take the very basic example. Traditional farming is quite inefficient, especially when the entire economy of the country is dependent on it. Computerized weather forecast departments actually extract information from the data stored in the computers about the rainfall. And that is how the information is provided to the farmers. Also, the various information about the different agricultural products can also be gained from the computers. For example, paddy, wheat, all the prices of these grains actually can be extracted and taken from the data stored in the computers. So the farmers cannot be cheated. Computers have actually made our life very convenient and comfortable. Years back, we had to stand in queues for railway tickets, for tickets for entertainment like movies. Now we just have to log on to their site and book tickets online. Hasn't that become convenient for us? You can just sit in your house and you don't have to stand in queues for hours. Computers have really made life much, much convenient and beautiful, isn't it? Well. At the same time comes to think of it if you have to fill your income tax returns and it is the last day and it's five o'clock already what do you do you stand in the queue and you land up losing your chance you can just simply go back and sit in your office and log on to the income tax site and fill in your returns from there you don't have to stand in queues and miss out on your chance hasn't that become much more convenient for us life is so beautiful with computers around us we don't have to really bother about anything, do we? Now suppose somebody is suffering from a major health problem and actually has to be operated immediately. What does one do then? 
when we go to the traditional form of operations, what generally happens? The doctor is actually present there, isn't it? But what if the doctor can't be present and the operation has to be conducted? It will be a mishap. Well, computers come very, very handy in this. All the robots are actually monitored by computers. So the doctor who has to conduct the particular operation, he doesn't have to be present there. He can be present somewhere else and through the computers giving guidelines to the robots as to which scissor to take, how to conduct the operation, how deep to cut the skin. Isn't it amazing? I mean, with computers, life has become so much convenient and all the major operations actually can be conducted with the help of the computers without a person actually being present there. Most of our sciences, modern sciences, are dependent on the computers. Engineering science, military science, agricultural science, medical science, all these sciences are actually dependent in terms of their operation totally on computers. Have you people heard of ISRO? I-S-R-O, Indian Space Research Organization. Well, the entire work that is conducted there is with the help of computers. May it be satellite guiding, rocket monitoring, rocket launching, all is done with the help of computers. Even the pictures that are clicked by the satellite received through the computers. Have I made myself clear here? I suppose all of you have a bank account here. Well, I do too. Tell me something. In the traditional forms of banking, how it used to operate with you guys? Standing in the queues and actually for different transactions, for withdrawing your money, for depositing your money? How things have changed with the help of computers? Wow, it's amazing. You can actually log on to the site where you have your bank account and do all the transactions on the internet. Isn't that amazing and most convenient way of banking? You don't actually have to be physically present in your bank doing all the transactions that you do. I find life much more convenient with this. I hope you guys do too. When you travel long journey, you don't have to carry a lot of cash with you. You can just carry a simple card that's called the ATM card, which is also computerized where you just pull in the card in the machine and you get the money, the amount of money that you actually want. Wow, amazing. Well, with the help of computers and internet, your education also, to a lot extent, has been simplified. Ask me how. So you can apply for different colleges, national or international, just sitting on the internet. Life has actually become very simple and convenient with the help of computers. You can sell and purchase books for that matter, sitting in your house on the computers with the help of internet. And if you want to get some educational material, you don't have to go to libraries or your school library or buy books. You can simply sit on the computers and with the help of internet, you can extract any amount of information that you actually want to get. Computers come quite at hand when it comes to your business dealings. Computers can actually be used, if you see, for inventory management, for payroll generation, for salary statement, for attendance maintenance of the employees. They can be used for electronic funds transfer and also for production invoice generation. We actually studied the different places where computers can be used. Computers can be used in a lot of places. But what is it that makes computers so much important? Can you people actually think of it? Computers do have a one-up over the human beings. Why? There are various reasons for it. We human beings as individuals have capabilities and a separate level of intelligence to think. Computers do not have intelligence level then why are computers over the human beings? Well, computers work on the information that is supplied by the human beings to them. And still, computers are creating wonders in the human world. Well, because of various reasons. Let's talk about a few. 
for that matter, speed. Computers can actually perform billions of functions in just a second. Human beings, it's practically impossible. At the same time, computers can store a large amount of data. In human beings, we do not have that much amount of capacity. Though we certainly have intelligence, but our memory is not as high as the computers. And they are very accurate. They do not make mistakes. It is only human beings like you and me who are liable to make mistakes and create errors. At the same time, computers can work 24-7 without a break. By 24-7, I mean continuously 24 hours, 7 days in a week. Wow, that's amazing. At the same time, computers can perform digital functions at quite a less cost. Computers like us do not get bored or tired. Computers can actually recall the data that was stored in the computers years before in just a second. Can we all do that? Practically impossible. Well, come to think of it, what is a computer? A computer is an electronic device which receives instruction, processes that instruction and gives us information in the form of output. So basically it receives the instruction as input, processes it in the central processing unit and gives us the information as output. There are three very important parts of the computer. First is the input. The input is what we give instruction to the computer. How is the instruction given to the computer? It is given with the help of a device known as the keyboard, as you can see on the monitor, through which we actually give instructions in the form of raw data. For example, name of a student how many marks the student has obtained as input. This information goes into the central processing unit as you can see on the monitor and in the central processing unit the information is processed to give us the output and the output is received through monitor which is the screen as you can see here or the printer that is the alphabets or the letters are printed out on a sheet of paper to give us a hard copy so that we can read it. That's the way to go about it. As you all know, as I spoke about the input device, the most important input device is none other than a keyboard. A keyboard actually looks quite like a typewriter. You all must have seen a typewriter, I suppose. Well, a keyboard actually looks like that, with a similar placement of keys. It is a device which is actually used for text-based data input, like, for example, your name, roll numbers. It is also used for selecting a command and also moving the cursor around the screen. Keyboards actually have the following keys. Keys for the letters of the alphabet A to Z. It also has the various punctuation marks, for example, comma, for example, brackets, for example, periods, etc. Numbered keys of a numeric keypad or both, example, numbers from 0 to 9. Keys that change the function of the other keys such as shift, caps lock, alt and control. Function keys numbered from F1 to F12. The function keys are actually shortcut keys through which we can run special programs. Example, pressing F1 will open the help of computer. Another very important input device apart from the keyboards that are used on the computers is a mouse. Now well, don't confuse it with the rat in the house, huh? though it has as long and big of a tail as the rat. But it is certainly an input device which is used with the computers. It is as swift as the rat though and performs very important functions of the computer. With the help of a mouse, you can actually give a command to the computer to perform various tasks. There are two or more buttons that are present on top of the mouse. The left hand side button is called the left button and the right hand side button is called the right button. By clicking on the left hand side button, you can actually select a particular file. And by clicking the right button on the mouse, you can choose a particular command from the shortcut menu and apply it to a file. For example, delete a particular file. There are many types of mouse that are available in the market today. First comes a mechanical mouse. A mechanical mouse have ball in them. Optical mouse 
is different from mechanical mouse and the difference is that they do not use ball in them. Rest is the wireless mouse. A joystick is another very important major input device like the mouse and the keyboard. A joystick has a base attached to it and with the base there is a stick on top of it. So you can rotate that stick in all directions. This enables the user who is playing a game to move a particular object on the screen in any direction according to the moving of the joystick. Another set of input device are our scanners. Apart from the three that we have studied, scanners look like photocopy machines and their work is quite a lot like photocopy machines. What happens in photocopy machines? In them, we place the document on the surface of a photocopy machine and it gives us the photocopies of the papers after printing. In scanners, they scan the documents which are placed on its surface and give them to the computers. Well, scanners are used to scan photos or documents. Few more examples of input devices are pen mouse, trackball, touchpad, light pen, etc. I am quite sure all of you are clear about the input devices. Let us all come to the output devices. What are output devices? Output devices are actually the devices which give us the processed data as information. It is given by the computers to us as the output. Well, the two very major and very important output devices with which we can't do without are monitors and printers. Monitors are none other than a TV-like screen, as you can see right in front of you. Monitors display texts, graphics and video on the screen. Well, monitors are measured diagonally from corner to corner. They come in different shapes and sizes. Monitors can range from 15 to 21 inches and more. They are also called soft copy output devices because Till the time the monitor is on, you can see everything displayed on the monitor. But as soon as you switch off the computer, all the information goes. Monitors are of two types, MGA and SVGA. MGA, that is monochrome graphics array, supports two kinds of colors, black and white. It was used in older monitors. It can only show text on the screen, that is no graphics and no photos at all. SVGA or Super VGAs supports millions of colors and with these monitors you can see your snap and also play a movie on them. Let's come to printers, our second most important output device. Printers are another most useful output devices of the computer. It is called hard copy output device, the reason being it prints on the paper and we can see the data on the paper when printer is turned off. First comes our impact printers. These printers use a striking head to print on the paper. In between head and paper, there is a black ribbon on which the head strikes and the impression comes on the paper. The speed of these printers is very, very slow and they can print to about one to four papers per minute. The next category of printers is non-impact printers. These printers uses another technology than striking head like laser printer, inject printers, etc. In non-impact printer category, there are many printers. But the two most widely used printers are inject printers and laser jet printers. In inject printers, there are ink bottles which has black and colored inks and there is electronic hole at the bottom of the bottle. And when the computer instructs the bottle for spray, then it sprays on the paper and impression comes on the paper. These printers have very high speed than dot matrix printers. It can print 6 to 10 papers per minute. On another side, there are laser jet printers. They use laser beam technology for printing on paper. These printers have very, very high speed and can print up to 10 to 100 pages per minute. There are other output devices like speaker, headphones, which are used for multimedia purposes and we can hear the voice from the computer. The 
before closing on this module, we will learn how to attach various devices to the computer. Let's see how to go about it. With practical experience and doing things right in front of you, you will get a better idea. And next time, you will be able to connect a computer on your own. My God, I'll be proud of you. Well, as you see, it is very simple. It's just a matter of connecting the CPU with the PowerPoint. What you do is, you take the power cord in your hand and plug it in into the power socket. Now, we come to the monitor. When you have to connect the monitor to the central processing unit, which we call the CPU, you take the monitor cord in the right direction and plug it in, as you can see here, this blue thing, plug it in into the monitor socket and simple, it's connected. The next comes our keyboard. How to connect the keyboard? Again, it is very simple. This is the keyboard cord in my hand, of the purple color, as you can see here. What I will do is, I will connect it to the keyboard socket, which is out of the two circles that you see here on the left side of the circle. And you have to be very careful the way you put it. It has a certain position to it, otherwise it will break. So, that's the way you put it. So, the keyboard is now connected to the central processing unit. After attaching the two different cords, as you've seen on the central processing unit, we come to a rat cord. I'm sorry, the mouse cord. Well, yes, it has a long tail and it's green in color, but don't confuse it with the other rat. This is the mouse of the computer I'm talking about. It is green in color and you will see how I will connect it to the central processing unit. I will actually take it to the mouse socket. Now, as you see, the purple is placed on the left. The green, which is the mouse circuit, is placed on the right of the keyboard socket. So, that's the way you put it. There is a certain position to it. So, you have to be very careful while you plug it in. Finally, we come to our fourth cord. The fourth cord is the printer cord. This cord is placed right here in the center below the keyboard and the mouse sockets. As you can see, I'm putting it. Watch carefully. That's all, folks, for our first module, which talked about computer basics. I hope you all enjoyed the class as much as I did. Well, as we have come to the end of this module, you are free to ask any questions. Any queries? Ma'am, what do we mean by input device? Well, a uh, very simple question. An input device is a source from which the instruction or the data is stored in the computer. And the devices through which we actually send the input to the computer are none other than keyboard, joystick, mouse, etc. Ma'am, what do you mean by multimedia system? Well, multimedia system is like a music system. I'm kidding. <laughs> it's not like a music system. What happens, it's quite close when you think of a system because it has speakers in it. A multimedia system is a computer which has SVGA monitor, speakers, mic. That's what you called a multimedia system. I hope I made myself clear. So friends, very interesting class. Till then, goodbye, take care. I will meet you in the next module. That is our second module. Let's now talk about another essential part of the computer. That is none other than software. We need to know the two basic terms. And these terms are instruction and program. If the program is on the desktop, this is the desktop, as you can see it there. You just simply have to double click on the icon. The start button is almost always visible, no matter whatever else you're doing on the computer. Another typical dialog box is the file box. This box opens when you choose the option open or save as command. Windows supports the latest multimedia and communication technologies. If you're familiar with any version of Windows, it will not be difficult for you to understand the other upgraded versions.